Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a jelly printing video for you and I'm going to make some more muted prints today because I have a lot of colorful and bright vibrant prints for my collages but I needed something to balance that out which is a little bit more neutral and I'm starting with a white acrylic paint and I also used the burnt umber or I will use the burnt umber both are the paints from Amsterdam which are my favorites for jelly printing sometimes I also use the Schminke Academy paints I'm using two jelly plates. One is more my palette where I um, pick up the paint with a stamp and transfer it to my bigger printing plate. And the papers I'm going to use today are rice paper and also some old book pages. But the old book pages are just there to clean my stamps, to clean the plate or to roll off the brayer. I already have a bunch of jelly printing videos on my channel where I'm using stamps together with acrylic paints on the jelly plate. I love this technique because it's not such a big thing as if you're using stencils because then you have all those stencils full of paint laying around and the stamps are so much smaller and I also really like the different textures you can create with them and also the surprises you sometimes have on your print. This stamp is one from the Coft Collection number 4. I'm sure someone will ask which size my jelly plates are. I know the small one must be a 6x6 square plate and the bigger one is something that is a little bit smaller than an A4 sheet of paper. So I can't tell you exactly which size it is. It's just a bit smaller than A4. While I'm printing or adding other stuff to the plate, I lay my stamp with paint upside down onto a baby wipe where I usually add a little bit more water with a spray bottle to avoid that the paint dries. For the next layer, I'm mixing the white with the burnt umber. And I will then brayer this over the pattern I have stamped to the jelly plate. If you want to have a super perfect print, you have to make sure to let the first layer dry completely. I don't want to wait that long, so I usually just take my time to mix the next color. Um, I maybe need some time to find my paper and then... Um, the paint that is already on the plate is almost dry and will not smear but it might smear a little bit but that just I feel adds to the print and to the look of it. I will give you a link to the paper I am using in the video description and that second paper I put onto the plate is just to avoid getting my fingers messy and when I pull the print I do that very carefully because the rice paper is super thin that's why I love it so much for collages it's almost like a thin fabric or kind of a tissue paper but much more um, stable than tissue paper but still thin and it tears of course if you don't if you have wet paint on it and if you don't be careful with it. The video is kind of long today because jelly printing takes a little bit of time. Um, so there might be areas where I don't talk that much. I hope you don't mind that. If there is something important, I of course will let you know and will explain what I'm doing. And here I'm adding another pattern to my jelly plate with the same stamp this time in white because I want to have a print where the lighter color is on top and that works really great with a jelly plate. At the end of the video I have two more tips on how to make some easy collage papers with 
tissue, so stay until the end and you will see them. Here I just use up some of the white paint on the old book paper just because um, I want to have as much collage papers as I can get from this session and I think the old book paper already makes a lovely collage paper. And here I'm mixing in some more of the burned umber with white to make my second layer on the plate. I really like how this print turned out. I think it's um, really nice to have that white pattern. And I think it's something that's so neutral, you can use this in so many different projects. In my next step, I just clean up my palette plate a little bit and I just use the stamp again to remove some of the paint from that palette plate and then pull a print with the old book paper. And I would just add this to my jelly plate so it will appear on the next print. And here it is. It's not um, a very visible texture, but I think it has a nice, it has a nice texture to it to use it just as a background. For my next print, I wanted to mix kind of a neutral bluish grayish color, and I'm just experimenting with the paints I have. I used the burnt umber again. I will use white again, and I will add. A little bit of turquoise. I think it's turquoise green. And the brush I'm using is not a normal brush, it's a silicon brush. Um, I love that one for these kind of things. Mixing paint, adding gesso to a paper or adding gel medium because it's so easy to clean. I picked another stamp. This is one of my favorites to create a pattern on a collage paper. It's from the Pencil Marks number no. 6 stamp set. I have just a few of this set available in my shop. So if you want to have this one, you have to be a little bit quick. Um, I don't know 
when this will be restocked once it's sold out. Um, definitely not in January. But of course this set is also available as a rubber stamp set. So um, these don't go out of stock because we're pressing our stamps in-house. So um, that isn't a problem. I'm just covering the whole plate with this image. Um, from time to time I uh, mix my paint again to get a better coverage on the stamp and I always make two to three um, prints with the stamp on the plate so I have different different textures of the image. Sometimes it's a bit lighter, sometimes it's a bit more intense and I think that makes it interesting in the end. My rice paper is a little bit too small, so I just align it with the right side and pull the leftover um, pattern with the old book page. I will flip through all the prints at the end of this video so you can see them again. This time I'm using the lighter mixture of paint with the stamp and I'm creating kind of a different pattern with it. As I said, um, it's kind of a play and it's a bit intuitive um, what I'm going to do in my next step. And I just experiment and explore a little bit. I really love the color that I got here. It's almost like green earth. It's one of my favorite colors from 
the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dürer pencils. Um, I really love this color and I use it a lot in my sketchbook. For the next print I wanted to mix something more warmer and I'm using Naples yellow and I think it's either burnt sienna or the burnt umber. I can't tell you at the moment but I'm sure we will see once I'm mixing the colors. And I might have made a little mess um, because I'm getting out a new baby wipe. Or maybe just the one I have used before was dry. I think I took a little break in between because sometimes I start a session in the morning and um, when the kids come home from school we have to make lunch and then um, I don't have time to keep on creating and sometimes I just come back later and restart the process. I think it was burnt umber not burnt sienna. And I'm mixing it with the white. And again I picked another stamp. This is also one that I really like for collage papers. Um, I prefer stamps that are kind of neutral or give me a more neutral pattern and this one is also from one of the pencil marks stamp sets I just can't remember from which one it must be number one or number two but of course I will link everything in the video description and talking about stamps we will have a holiday break over Christmas and New Year's that means the shop stays open and you can shop some stamps if you want to um, you're welcome to do that, but we will have no shipping and I don't have the exact dates in mind, but you will find them on the webshop page and I will also post this on our Instagram um, page and on Facebook. For my second layer for this print, I just add in more white to make the color a bit lighter. I don't want to make um, super high contrast prints. I want to make more muted prints to use to balance out that colorful stuff I usually use. And that is something I recognized that I always search for some neutral papers that go against my colorful ones but to me it's really hard to make such stuff like that because I feel it looks a bit boring but I need that to combine it with the stuff that I like in the end I'm super happy with the prints and I really like them and I will for sure make some more prints in this style in the future I really love how this turned out, although it's not my favorite color. And here I just do the same that I've done before. I'm using the paint that was left on the right side or on my palette plate. And I just make a pattern on my printing plate. And in between, whenever it's necessary, I clean that palette plate up um, by trying to create kind of a texture and to make, to make another nice background with this leftover paint. I now mix in some more of the burnt umber to make it a bit darker again and so I um, get a second layer with some darker paint. And as I said in the beginning, 
don't go over the first layer immediately. You don't have to let it dry, but you can let it dry, of course. Um, just make sure that it's not super wet when you go over it. When it's a bit wet, it might smear a little, um, it might transfer itself a little to your brayer and then over your jelly plate, but usually that gives more grunge and interest to the print. This time I have created a second a layer with a pattern and if you're using your stamps with acrylic paint make sure to clean them afterwards and don't let the paint dry on the stamp. In case it happens that your paint dries you can always use alcohol to remove it but it's a kind of a hard job and I'm not sure if using alcohol to clean a stamp is so good for the stamp over time. Here I'm mixing another brownish neutral color to pull the pattern of the plate.
And even if I hadn't added any new pattern, I got a really interesting print here um, with just that leftover that was on the plate. And this print is kind of surprising because it has some really interesting texture on it. For my next print, I'm using that cross stamp together with some paint gray paint it's a vinyl paint I'm using I would have used the acrylic paint but I only have a paint gray from Schminke and it is strange it has it is not dried out but it's like jelly I don't know it's really really strange and not very nice to use and I'm a little bit disappointed and maybe I should um, write there support don't know if this helps that paint tube is not old I would say it's maybe a year old and the paint has a really strange consistency I had the same consistency with some dilutions paints I believe but it was years ago um, this final paint peels a little on the jelly plate um, I think you can see that it's you stamp the image and then the paint um, yeah, makes this watery texture. I don't know how to, to describe that, um, but I think it is visible. So acrylic paint might work better on the jelly plate than the vinyl paint. But I promise this print is going to be very nice. I want to mix the paints gray with white, but I don't want to mix everything I have here on my palette plate because that would be too much. So I try to scrape something to the side and just use the, the paint that is remaining in the middle of the plate. I have to say I really like the result. I think it's super interesting.
as I had so much paint on that palette plate, I decided to pick it up with a rice paper and that was a great decision because I think that's also a really gorgeous texture. I believe these were the last prints I did, but I have some more ideas for collage papers to share with you. So um, here I have some tissue paper and the tissue is from shoes I bought for the kids. Usually the shoes come in a box with some kind of this tissue paper. And I'm using a Pentel pocket brush pen with a permanent black ink. And as my uh, collage paper, I just add some writing. I don't write um, things you can read, but in my mind I write words that I want to say. And sometimes I just write down um, my thoughts, sometimes if I'm not happy about something, or sometimes if I am happy about something, and I just smear that down um, and this paper gives a really nice um, yeah, pattern for collages. And here you can see how it finally looks. Something else you can do is just make patterns with that brush pen to your tissue paper, which also will give you a nice and interesting collage paper later. I love to use these with gel medium to adhere them to my collages, but they also work with a glue stick. You just have to be a little bit careful not to, yeah, to tear the paper while you add the glue stick. That's sometimes a little bit difficult. And here is another way to use that Pentel brush pen. What I also really like is neon colors and this is neon red. It looks a bit different on camera than it looks in real life. It's a bit more pinkish. And I really like to stamp a pattern with this kind of paint and I also use tissue here so I always have something ready to go. If you adhere tissue with gel medium it becomes very translucent so it's almost not visible that it's there. Before saying goodbye, I just want to flip through all the prints I have done and I'm starting with these book pages which were um, only the leftover papers and cleaning papers and I also have one print um, here in the stack that I did for an Instagram reel on that same session. I think it, I don't know if it's in between or if it will be the last one but you might have already seen it.
I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you are inspired now to maybe make your own collage papers or jelly prints. And I hope you will see us next time. Bye.